Hello, this is Jeff Mazur. Um, I'm going to take you through the sales and operations planning overview. Um, I'm a client manager in North America here and I want to give you a good good idea of what this, this product offers and what, what it can bring to you. Um, we'll go through some, some various slides uh, today and, and I'll take you into the software. We'll be primarily working in the uh, IFS Arena client. So that's our new new version or new new client uh, that, we, that we're offering as part of Apps 10 and then it's the future one going forward. So we'll spend some time in there, show you what it looks like. Um, the sales and operations planning module though is, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's something that we've come up with based on, you know, a lot of feedback from customer over, customers over the years. Um, or they want more of a, um, a tool to, to help do, do more business management processes, um, making sure we're achieving and aligning, you know, different functions of the organization. So it's it kind of span, you know, as you get into here, you'll see it spans a lot of number of different modules, you know, looking at your inventory plan, looking at your sales plan, looking at your master scheduling and forecast and past issue, past history, and then trying to project what things will look like in the future. Um, and we're trying to, the goal here is to provide, you know, a properly balanced supply and demand um, uh, for, you know, forward looking plan for you. And it's, it's really updating the high level forecast, which in turn can turn into your sales plans and your operations planning. Um, this is usually something that's looked at maybe, maybe monthly. And it tends to be out, you know, you're, you're out. The, the data you're looking at here is going to be in what we're going to be talking about is probably stuff that your your management and executive management level are looking out, you know, a uh, year and two years and, 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 and out for there to try and come up with that sales and operations plan. So it's using data from master scheduling and inventory and all your all your all your previous data and, and forecast, but it's also helping you project where you're going to be at and where you have potential issues, maybe. So the other nice thing it does is you can do some, you know, various scenarios. So if you start to see a potential issue with a product family or, or certain certain areas of your business, you can you can come up with different scenarios that, that can help you manage that and come up with different ways to to plan for potential future shortages that, that you're projecting. So um it does uh help you with kind of your monthly and, and quarterly and, and and, and meetings like that that you're having kind of at the product family level. Um, we have different tools in the application. So here we've got kind of the MRP, which probably a lot of people are familiar with. Um, many, many customers run that. That's looking at your daily components, your supplies and demands and such. And that's more at the execution phase. Weekly and such is more at the master scheduling phase when you get to weekly, maybe monthly for that too, but it's more at the finished goods level. So your actual finished goods that you're, that you're shipping. And then sales and operations planning is up above here a little bit and can feed into your business planning functions. Um, but it's more at the product family level. So a product family is something that's made up of a mix of a number of similar finished goods. So you define what those are and, and when you're setting up the system, but it's there to help you for that long-term term planning. And, and the output is really to help you figure out how much should we sell and make kind of per product family, you know, per month. Um, you probably don't, you know, your planning horizon is probably in that 15 to 18 plus month range when we're talking about sales and operations planning. These other tools kind of take, take place Within that time frame, maybe within a year, your you know your forecasts and such that you're feeding in from demand demand planner, or you're just putting in your your forecasts manually into master scheduling, and then that's feeding into MRP. Um, you know, trying to balance that demand and supply is is important when you're trying to run your business well, making sure you know things are balanced out and you're you're meeting the the proper demands for your customers. Um. So, you know, as you know, you, you, depending on how you're hitting that, you know, are your in inventories increasing? Um, do you have potential cash flow problems? Just depending on different uh, scenarios that you might have, but coming up with that balance is, is very important. Um, and sales and operations planning, because we're having that longer term visibility, based on the data that we have in the system and that we're projecting, um, we're trying to identify that in information and, and potential issues um, and, and getting that balance right um, earlier before you know you get into the, the execution phase and you find out we, we, we really missed the mark. Um, 
we look at things like uh, inventory and, and such, but also kind of from a capacity and load standpoint, um, balancing that uh, that resource capacity, the available capacity with the resources that you have. Um, you know, do we need to plan on hiring more people or or adding more plant space or you know building a new plant or, or buying new machines uh, to help fulfill some of these uh, projected plans that you might have. So it helps you balance that with resource requirements planning as well with the data that you have in the system. Um, the basis of this module, um, it was, you know, a, a lot of it was was derived from customer feedback, wanting to see a lot of this information, but there's a, there's a pretend uh, a book out there, Sales and Operations Planning, um, down at the bottom right corner that was kind of used to help help guide R&D in developing that sales and operations plan. So there's some there's some good information there if, if you want to dive into the details uh, there with you uh, uh, for your business operations. Um, <clears throat> there's really, you know, we kind of look at it as five-step monthly process. Um, Kind of, you know, starting out with kind of monthly recurring processes, a commute commu um, ends up with an executive meeting, basically. Sorry. Um, so you kind of go through some data gathering, uh, demand planning, supply planning, you know, looking at your different forecast resources planning. Um, and then, you know, you start to get into this, this pre-meeting here uh, prior to the executive meeting. As you're coming up with these this data down below here, then you're getting ready to run your sales and operations plan and look at it, um, uh, take a look at various scenarios that you might have um, and, and really help you try and effectively coordinate the data between all the different parts of the organization from, uh, from, from your supply and demands uh, uh, portions there. So here's just a quick view of kind of what we what we end up with here, and this is just a, a, a slide. I'll take you into the software in just a second, but um, this slide kind of takes you through um, looking at the the end result of what you're doing. So these graphs are based on obviously the data, and when we look at this, we'll look at the sales and operations grid, which has all the data behind this, um, which is very tabular in nature. But this gives you the graphical views. So um, instead of having to, you know, over the years, customers have had to kind of figure out ways to get stuff into get their data into Excel or, or other other tools, and and then come up with the graphs. So we're trying to build those those items in here so that you don't have to do all that. It's more of a, a, a prepackaged solution for you. So here's um, jumping from the PowerPoint here quick over into the actual applications here so I can show you some, some actual data and so I can move around a little bit. Um, you know, the sales and operations planning, um, we, we, we have a couple different flavors of this, make to stock and make to order. Um, but it starts to look at a particular product family. In this case, I'm looking at an engine family. And that engine family has different types of engines under here. So sales and operations planning isn't looking at an you're not doing this individual part by part by part like you might be doing a master schedule forecast or you know your MRP planning and such. That gets into much more detail. This is at the higher level of a family uh, product family type planning tool that's out there. Um, on the graphical view, um, this is in the Arena client. Um, I can click on the the navigate or the drop down list here, and it'll give me the the legend here to say here's my actual sales receipts my new forecast planned inventory new operations plan and such um uh, i've got some other uh just target inventory um for for inventory days um on hand and such some data there that we can look at um as i'm working with this i can put in different notes so i can start to type in Here's my explanation of this because you got to think about this too. This is a tool that you can use when you're in a meeting or getting ready for a meeting. So as you're looking at this and analyzing this, you can start to take notes in here about why why is my demand looking the way it does? Why is my supply looking the way it does? I can start to take notes in here so now that I can use this when I go into you know, into our executive meetings and our planning meetings. Um, uh, so we have some further information. A um, couple of things here. Um, obviously, this is our, our new Arena client. It's written, written in HTML5. Um, you know, one of the nice things is it's uh, it's it's device agnostic, so you can run this on on different uh, different uh, uh, 
user interfaces like a tablet or a phone or, or your desktop. Um, and this is just running in Google Chrome. So I can quickly come in here and I can see what this might look like on, on an iPad Pro. And I can start to start to move things around. I can, you know, some of the, the graphics, you know, change a little bit here. But if I want to look at the, the detailed data here, I can I can see what it looks like um, when I'm looking at it on my device. Uh, so this is a tabular view that gets you into all the all the nitty gritty details behind uh, uh, where the graphs are and such. Um, if I want to see what this, if I need, if I'm sitting in a meeting and I need to get the information quick and I just have my phone with me, um, I can see what it looks like on an iPhone. Um, and I can scroll down through here, not quite as um, easy to read some of these these forms with a lot of the data on it, but you can get to it. And obviously if you flip your phone around, it looks a little bit different too. Um, so this just gives you an idea on what you can do with the application. This isn't a, it's not an app, a separate app for your device. It's just, um, this is the IFS applications here running the way it would look like on a phone or a tablet and such. So, and that's across the application. So this new arena interface allows you to do that, um, to, to drill into the detail as you need to from any device. So again, a lot of times if you're sitting in a meeting and you don't have your, you're not sitting at your desktop with your large monitor, you can still get to the data um, and, and go through there. So I can have my different uh, planning levels here um, for, for various parts um, within the arena client. You know, I can kind of, shrink that down or expand it so I can click through my different planning parts that I'm working with or, or my planning families that I'm working with. Um, I can easily navigate it. So like the IEE client, um, you still have the kind of the breadcrumb trail up here. You can start to, or yeah, you, know, you can start to see your, you can navigate from here. Um, I still have the navigator. So you still have the full navigator here um, on your left hand side. And as I Go back and forth. I can see my supply chain demand planning here. Sales and operations planning falls under the supply chain uh, folder. That'll be the same over in the IEE client as well. Um, so depends on which device you're looking at it and how much data you want to see. I have my shortcuts over here on the left as well. So you can quickly navigate to various things. One thing you'll notice is the right mouse button goes away. Um, in the arena client, um, but things, you know, to get to various pieces of information like the master schedule for these parts. So I'm looking at my engine family and let's just say I want to go to the planning structure and here I can see the two engines. I just have a very simple structure here, but it's just two engines that are part of this engine family. You, you probably have a lot more if you're using this. Um, and you can see it's got a lot of information out here. Um, as I get into here, I can click on these ellipses here over on the left and go into the details of, of that part and component. Um, I can delete it. I can uh, uh, do a component where used, where is this module, where is this engine used in, in, other, in other pieces of, uh, of this uh, structure. Um, I can jump to the inventory part. I can do document, document text and such. So it's a little different way of navigating, but once you get in here and do walk through the forms a couple times, whether it's a customer order, purchase order, shop order, um, you'll, you'll get familiar with it pretty quick. Um, right from here, I can, I can do the phase out or replace of a structure component. I can add components and uh, look at my inventory part here. So different ways of navigating. Obviously this is all touch enabled. So if I'm at my, uh, um, I, on my tablet or my phone, I, I don't have to try and click on these ellipses to get to it. Um, we're trying to present a lot of the information to the users that they need at that point in time when they're on that form. So you still have your uh, kind of duplicate, delete, edit, you know, other options that you might be used to in, in IEE over on the left-hand side or your other, other tool options, but they're all there. And then you can search and, and do some filters within here. So um, I can start to look at the, the where used here, uh, the multi-level structures, if I have that all set up so I can look at, look at that data pretty quick and easy through here. Um, I can also shrink up the different panels, um, within here. Um, so it makes navigating, uh, very, very easy. And the idea behind this arena client is it should be very intuitive to your users. Um, you can change what data shows here. Um, there is a, a page designer tool, so you can move fields, you can hide fields, you can make certain fields mandatory, um, things along those lines too. So, um, if I get back into the sub sales and ops plan form here. This is the actual form that shows me all of my, my different periods um, that, that I'm looking at here. Um, it's looking at four, there's a lot of data on this form, but you have to kind of consider that 
you know, to get these graphical views and such to show you, we have to have a lot of data here, but you can also um, look at moving columns around, hiding columns, um, taking advantage of some of that so if you don't use certain things but you can see it's bringing in all this information my forecast uh, my forecasted revenue my difference between the old and new forecast um, shipped quantities um, booked quantities last year's ship shipped amount um, and some of the slides i have will show, show a little more data in there but it starts to show my inventory plan and where i might be falling short in it and then i can start to put notes over on the right here for each of the different periods on what i think we might need to do or or, or come up with some different ideas so you get a lot of information on this but again the idea is that you're coming up with um you know being able to do that analysis without having to to you know, go out and create your own reports in an Excel spreadsheet and try and pull together your demand planning forecast, your master scheduling information, your MRP information, your uh, your shipments, your receipts from customer order, or your receipts from POs or or shop orders, and and it's it's trying to give you all that information here for you. So, um, I can come across here and I can see my different parts that I have um, for the MS level one, master scheduling level one parts um, that I'm actually, this will actually end up rolling up the data from um, and start to look at a lot of information there for you. Um, I can come in here, we've got some different load analyses. Um, so I can start to look at the load for my current capacity. Um, I can do different scenarios. So this capacity scenario is just my default one. Um, we'll take a look at those in a little bit, but you can perform resource requirements planning. Um, obviously your work center holds your capacity information um, kind of at the detail level. So start to allow you to drill into those things, but it gives you a graphical view. And again, you come over here and you can see, you know, here's my sales and operations plan. Here's my forecast. Here's my projected on hand my capacity level here is is here and you can see as we get into some of these these more current months here and such uh we, we might not have enough capacity so that's when you have to start to come up with different scenarios and, and see where you're at um we can do some comparisons between different master scheduling sets um i believe this is yep so here i can get a, again a very graphical view of, of the data um, on some of these other forms that, that have already been predefined. And you can start to drill in and again, you can see your new forecast, new operations plan. So you can see some differences between your, your, your master scheduling forecast and your, and your, and your operations plan and where, where you're falling short or where you're, you're overachieving and maybe you have too much or maybe you have too little if, uh, products coming in or, or going out. Um, here's just another, another view of the data. Um, and this is just by product family. So we just have a couple different different ways to slice and dice the data again as you're looking at it. So this is by product family. This is per site. Um, and then you can start to uh, let's see, you can look at the data that's behind here, uh, see what's out there. You can look at it by, um, by revenue. Um, or gross, gross profit. So you can look at some diff different values and I just have to change some of my periods, but to, to grab the data for this site. But yeah, you can start to see, you know, I want to go two year and what periods from period one to period two, all the way through, you know, you're from in two years. So you can start to slice and dice the data here without having to do a lot of, um, a lot of extra. There we go. So here's the, I just kind of expanded this panel here so you can get the list of all your different product families that you can be working with. And then I can see for this company one, um, here's where I actually have some data um, in, in here for this. And it's coming after your planning data uh, for from your master scheduling sets and such from the sales and ops planning. So, and again, you can kind of jump around from company and then I can go back to the site and then I can start to look at, you know, per product family, uh, and make to stock, make to order uh, differences here. So it gives you a lot of nice ways to view that data and, and take a look around the system. So the, the basic function is, is found under supply chain and it's under under here. And then we've got some product family masters where you can start to define the basic, some more of the basic data. Um, um, planning structures, MS level zero parts, you can go to those two. You can see what your temp demand and planning time fences are. Um, how far back you know for historical periods of sales and ops going to uh to to keep and then how many periods are you going to show as far as data uh going back how many months do you want to go back and then your forward planning horizon so this is some of the basic data setup uh that that 
feeds into when we're looking at the, the data on, on the tabular view and in the graphical mode. So. Okay, so I'll take you back into uh, some, some other data here to look at it, but just to highlight a few other things. Here's like the historical periods to show when I'm in that uh, make to stock form, um, looking at the graphical view. And again, our grid data is over on the left here. But it starts to say how many periods do you want to show and see as you're looking through this. Um, here's a graph with for a part with a little more uh, data behind it. Um, but again, you can start to see your actual sales, receipts, new forecasts, planned inventory, new operations plans. So you can start to get all that graphical data in here with it. Again, you don't have to go out and create your own own tools and, and, and reports out there to try and try and come up with this. Um, um, different, you know, pieces of data like the target days on hand and such. You, you can start to set and define that and see where you're at. What's my average cost? What's my average sales price? What's my planning and uh, forward planning horizon that, that I'm looking at here? Um, here's, here's an example of uh, um, the grid form. <laughs> Again, this is, has a lot more data in it. Um, I don't want you to get too scared off by this. It is a lot of information, but again, when you when you're looking at it, you'll you'll arrange your columns the way you want them. Um, you can, and again, the idea is here's all the raw data coming in from your your other applications that you're using, from your customer order shipments, from your your actual receipts, from shop orders and purchase orders. If it's if it's a depending on, on the product it is. And then your actual shipments, your order booked amount, your, your dollar values here as you go through. And then right within here, once you're ready and you can calculate the, the sales and operations planning and it'll just update that information for you. Um, so you can run that. And then you can start to look at kind of what your old forecast is, what your new forecast is. So it's tying into your forecasting tools. Um, it'll help calculate that inventory plan for you. Um, and then um, you know you can modify you know your your operations plan here as well. Um, so there there's some input data that that you can do as well. Um, not just it's not just looking at at the data, but you can start to do the analysis and use your your knowledge and your skills um, uh, on where you think things should be and, and how it should look. So and again, that's where some of the notes and and that, that you can put in here, the demand and supply notes start to come into hand, be, become handy because now when you go into that meeting, your monthly or quarterly planning meeting, you you can explain that and you, and you understand, you recall what you did and um, keeps track of that for and for other people that are looking at it. Um, that's the nice part. So. You know, we've, we've got uh, kind of the make to order and make to stock, stock different views. Um, uh, obviously, the make to stock is, is you know, product. Um, uh, we're going to make the product and then wait for the customer to come and get it. Um, make to order is we're going to wait for the orders to come in. So, you know, it, it may mean a bigger backlog, maybe a, a, a different lead times, you know, for customers, obviously. So some of your lead time planning, it'll start to help figure out where you're at and, and maybe how far your your backlog plan is. So the backlog is it just refers to all the customer orders received, but not yet shipped. And it's actually kind of we consider it negative inventory. And again, this kind of goes back to some of the concepts in that book that we talked about. But um, and then looking at, you know, what is your true backlog um, and what's your plan backlog um, for make to order versus make to stock uh, in, in your sales, sales and operations planning uh, gives you some good tools out there, there to do this. So again, you know, we're in the make to order. It's very similar, um, but we might have some different target backlog in, in number of days. So by the time we get the customer order, the time we actually ship it, you know, what's our what's our target um, that, that we're, we're planning for from a family level, not actually individual parts. You know, you're not getting into those individual pieces. You're looking at that family level or that much higher level up in the system. Um, here's just a couple slides on the, uh, you know, just to talk about the, the different steps here with your data gathering, trying to get the uh, um, you know, data maybe a day or two after the previous month. You're gonna, you're gonna make sure you get that information in. Looking at your actual demand supplies and your, your actual data that, that you did, and then coming up with your, your demand planning 
uh, forecast, um, giving you some statistical reports. Um, and then your sales managers, marketing managers might review them and perhaps override them and, and get that human input into your demand planning side. Um, and then when we get into here, when you're in the sales and operations plan, you're just an example of um, uh, some some optimistic sales plans. So you can have different master scheduling sets feeding into here, different forecasts feeding into here. So this is where you start to be able to do some scenarios now. Um, so you can look at whatever reality is and what, what's going on with, with all the data that you've had and what you're thinking is, but now you can start to come up with different scenarios to, to play around with that data, you know, basically and, and say, how, do, how are we gonna better achieve to make sure that, you know, where, where are we really thinking we're gonna be at in a year or two years, you know, and that, 12, 15, 18 month plus uh, time, time frame. Um, and you might arrange it, you know, here we're, we're thinking we're going to release a new product um, early in 2020 or, or 2021, 2022. Um, we're going to plan on increased order volumes. And here here's my explanation of why. Um, so we need to monitor this carefully. So you can start to do it by your different product families here. And as you go through, you can look at your your forecast, your old and your new forecast, and your differences, looking at where you might be at with, with your different planning data. And, and now you can start to do some supply chain planning um, and manage that forecast. So that we can uh, adjust our operational plan to help meet those those inventory targets. So here's where you know you can start to go through. Here's my new operations plan. Here's what I'm thinking as far as volume goes. Um, you know how many how many products am I going to be making? You can start to see what your new forecast was, and then you can see here's what my operations plan is going to be, and you can make some adjustments uh, to some of those. Um, and then you'll say here's what we're going to do for supply. We're going to have to do overtime in November to meet the December sales peak and um, you know, different, different things that might affect your supply. So you're I'll be able to do that set at the high level from the product family. And then you can also do it kind of line by line as you're making adjustments to those quantities, or you're not sure why this is low. And you're like, here's, you know, we'll have to double check those numbers or whatever it might be. But that's where it starts to, to give you that powerful tool where you can come up with these different scenarios out in the system. Um, once we start to get that, that information figured out, then we can also look at our, our resourcing, right? So that's always a big, big play when we're, we're trying to figure out if we're going to add new product lines or new, new, new products into, into the system, how is our uh, capacity going to look? Um, so I can look at um, my various, you know, it breaks it down by various work centers here, different assembly, machine shop, test, um, based on the, the product family that that's going to be impacting it, looking at your, your uh, resource requirements planning uh, data and here it can start to say that you know certain work centers you're going to be overloaded some you might be okay um, some you're going to be underloaded on yet so you can say okay why is sh uh, shipping and finished goods is underloaded we'll be fine there um, here we're we're just fine on the machine shop but here assembly and test and and looking at finished goods inventory space planning projected on hand for different load sources you know we're going to be overloaded with that um, so so it starts to take a look at a lot of different different pieces of the data um, but it gives you that that quick view into where you're at um, and then you can run this load analysis it's an actual job that runs i um, mean you can perform resource requirements planning um, in the background As I come up with the uh, the data um, and it calculates that, now I can start to look at my various periods out here. I can see where my sales and ops plan are. So from a graphical view, I can quickly get to that information now uh, to look at my load analysis. Um, and I can drill into the work centers. Um, I can perform resource requirements planning if I change some data. Um, I can recalculate it, and obviously the grid behind here is the data uh, that that's being pulled in for the graphical graphical view here. But you can see your your you can see your capacity, your overload threshold, your underload threshold. So a lot of pieces of information here for you. And then this is the grid, which gives you a lot of data to to look through. But as you're looking at some of that those things, you can start to see where your load is, what the actual numbers are behind there, and such. And, and you can see some of that on the on the chart as well as you hover over the different different parts. Um, here's, 
here's kind of the, the, the requirements planning for the optimistic sales plan using the second shift capacity. So um, I can put in a different different resource requirements plan in for a second shift, adding some resources in here to help out with supply. Um, so you can see that scenario uh, based on my resource requirements planning changes that I've made. Um, now I can say that, okay, I'm adding a second shift to help with some of these overloaded situations. And then I, I can start to look at um, the load, um, where my projected on hand is for my load source. Um, you know, so hopefully now I'm looking a little bit better here. Now that I have things lined up and I've got a scenario or two on how we're going to address the potential issues, um, now we can go into our pre-meeting, uh, maybe with our executive meeting. This is before you probably go before the... The, the executives and, and, the, and the board and such, and say, here's what we're planning to do for adding a second shift, for example, right? So um, there is also some financial aspects here. So we can take a look at the, the data in a couple different ways. Again, I can look at it by my different, uh, different families here. Um, and I can start to see what my sales projections are per company. Um, I can look at sales projections per site. So some, this just has some more data from, from the forms that I was showing you a little earlier, but you can start to see what my ship prop profit is, my forecasted profit, um, balance forecast baseline forecasted profit, sorry. Um, but I can look at gross profit or by revenue. Um, so a couple different options that are there. And again, I can set my different periods for my time intervals that I want to look at here. And then I can jump from the company, the high level into the site, and then down into the product family as I, as I go through some of those forms. And here's just by product family here again. So, so hopefully that gives you a little idea of, of what the sales and ops plan is. I mean, obviously it is a kind of a business management tool, um, usually used by the management and executive teams to help uh, you know align those those properly balanced supplies and demands in in your in your long term intermediate to long term type planning functions so that that'll feed then into your your the rest of your organization as you start to uh start to execute those plans and get things moving forward but at least it gives you the data um it allows you to make some proper analysis it gives you some good tools to have you know some different scenarios um um, I can look at my different resource constraints, inventory constraints, um, and then some some online simulations. That's what what helps a lot because now you can start to come up with your ideas on how you're going to explain to to the the executives or, or the or the board on here's why we're going to increase the capacity and here's why and here's here's the impact on on the profits and we're going to make sure that we're we're, we're aligned um, kind of across the board with with what we're planning on at at that long term high level high level planning. So. Hopefully this gives you a little idea of what it does. Um, I guess I think that's about it. If you do have any further questions, you can always contact your main IFS contact, um, your client manager or sales rep, and, and they can help you through um, uh, getting some more information. Thank you for your time.